Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph for a chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I am Steph and you are listening to episode 70 about Beltane. And as promised last week, I do have a guest host this week. So the guest host is Tara. (laughs) She's back. And it may not seem like a long time for you because I think listeners it's only been two episodes of just listening to me. (laughs) Uh, But it's been a while since we recorded recorded together. So it should be a fun one, but Beltane is one of Tara's favorite holidays. So, so why don't you <laughs> make sure that she was able to come talk about this one because it's probably the one that she does the most for all the um, <laughs> throughout the year. So it could be you know fun to hear from her and from the Wiccan perspective. So technically, she is the guest co-host this week, even though you're used to her being the regular co-host. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so you'll be hearing for her today, and then the next two weeks are additional different guest co-hosts that are not Tara. So whole spread of different people for you to learn from in the next couple of weeks. Yay! So to get ready for Beltane, which is coming up this weekend. So excited. It's a weekend, guys. Beltane is our second of the four Celtic fire festivals on the Wheel of the Year. The first one was in bulk. Mm-hmm. And Beltane occurs on May 1st, which is about the midway point between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. And like all Wiccan holidays, modern Beltane celebrations are inspired by older pagan rituals and traditions. And particularly in the case of Beltane, it's inspired by the historic May Day celebrations that occurred throughout Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. Yay. So Beltane is a Celtic word meaning the fires of bell and that is why it's primarily a fire festival and that's why last week's episode was all about cauldrons to get you ready for this and bell b-e-l likely referred to the Celtic sun god Bellinus. Beltane was first mentioned in an Irish text from the 10th century where it described how cattle were driven between two bonfires on Beltane as a magical means of protecting them from disease before they were let out into summer pastures. And that is the first written account of Beltane, but it's likely that Beltane was celebrated long before it was incorporated into this Irish folklore. Yes. So Irish lore had the year divided into two main seasons, winter and summer. Uh, I know now we have eight divisions in the will of the year, but originally it was just winter and summer. So the beginning of the year and the start of winter were celebrated around November 1st, which we all know what that is. (laughs) <laughs> it's that one. Yay. Um, and then the beginning of summer was celebrated on or around May 1st, which is Beltane. These two dates were viewed to be the times when the veil, the veil between the human and supernatural world was super thin and fairies and spirits could easily cross into our realm. That's why a lot of the May Day traditions center around the Fae. Indeed, whereas Samhain is similarly thin veil, but it mm-hmm. centers more around spirits and ancestors. So for Beltane decorations, we did talk in the episode in the first season last year all about Beltane correspondences. So that includes decor, flowers, food, herbs, crystals. All of those things are in last year's episode if you want to catch up on that. And for decorations, people would adorn their doors and windows with yellow spring flowers like primrose, rowan, and hawthorn. And also in parts of Ireland, people would create a May bush which was a thorn bush decorated with flowers, ribbons, and shells. And these are still hugely popular ways to recognize the day. Yes. It's similar to a Christmas tree in the Christian belief, but all summer themed. Spring yeah. Summer. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think of that, but yeah. <laughs> it analogy. is. Yeah. <laughs> we used to do this when I was growing up. <laughs> uh, fire is a huge component of Beltane. On this day, all household fires would be extinguished and then relit from a huge community Beltane fire. Uh, the special Beltane fires were believed to have protective powers and people would walk around between or jump over the bonfires. It also was believed that if a couple held hands and jumped over the fire, they'd be blessed with fertility. And this is still done today, the fire yep. jumping. I think Beltane is still celebrated here in the U.S. and it is one of the most popular yes, Wiccan holidays worldwide. to celebrate. But I think even more in Europe, people still do like have fire jumping bonfires. <laughs> that is like a thing. I don't think we do that as much here. We do here in the Midwest. Um, we have a lot <laughs> of German 
people and May Day is one of the huge festivals that people really embrace around here. So we still have a huge May Day festival, which incorporates bonfires, maypoles. We'll talk about more things that they incorporate, but it's a big thing every year around here. So let us know if you uh, jump a bonfire. <laughs> yes. We are Usually they let it go down and you jump over the coals, but... <laughs> <laughs> And like many pagan festivals, Beltane includes lots of feasting, drinking, and toasting to the gods and spirits. And (laughs) these feasts, people eat oatmeal cakes, a drink called kodal, which is made of eggs, butter, oatmeal, and milk, and then cooked over the bonfire. I'm not a huge fan of this, but a lot of people that like oatmeal really like it because it's like super sweet, rich oatmeal. Yeah, this is not something that that I would eat. I don't like it. (laughs) But a lot of people do. And during the process of making this oatmeal drink, uh, some is spilled on the ground as an offering to the spirits. Yeah. And people also eat oatmeal cakes, now and they're called good. the Beltane Bannock. And it's it, 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 literally what it sounds like, oatmeal cake. <laughs> and, it's good. <laughs> uh, there is a folk magic rit- ritual where you throw a piece of the bannock over your shoulder as an offering as a way to placate certain animals that might harm your herd so things like foxes and wolves and you're giving them like a little bit of an offering so they don't kill all your cows and when i was younger we would put a little bit of the oatmeal cakes out with a little thing of honey so oh, that's fun yes because yeah. uh it's also a big fay day and fay love honey. it is a huge fay and they love honey love it <laughs> and of course this is also may day, may day. <laughs> so beltane and May Day are really mixed now. Really Beltane annoying. is takes a lot from the these ancient like pagan festivals, mm-hmm. but traditional like today it's not just these traditional festivals like how pagans used to celebrate. It's also incorporative of May Day, so they kind of combine the two. Yes, and May Day is the start really of flower crowns. Yes. Uh, Flower Which crowns. are amazing and so easy to make, guys. Yes. Yeah, flower crowns are super popular. They started in ancient Rome. So you've probably seen those laurel wreaths that go to the victor. Mm-hmm. That is how they were awarded to you know war heroes and emperors and things like that to signify respect and success. And that became a powerful and regal symbol. And then, of course, you see it across today in museums that when you see statues and things that are like made of marble or bronze or something like that a lot of them have those laurel wreaths on their head almost all of them do guys guarantee you've seen this (laughs) (laughs) and then of course you know the plebeian masses in rome did not want to miss out so they made their own natural crowns and flowers and added things for their gods and goddesses during special occasions particularly upon may day Mm -hmm. um, when they would put these flower crowns on young maidens as they celebrated flora who was the goddess of flowers and fertility And this festival was called Florialia. I think that's how you say it. I have no idea. I'm always bad at pronunciation. (laughs) I think that's how you say it. And it is the earliest known May Day festival. I think it's Floralia festival. It's the festival of Flora, the ancient Roman goddess. Uh, And that was from. Flowers and fertility. (laughs) Yes. And that was from April 27th to May 3rd. So that is like the earliest in in ancient Rome um, that we know of celebrating May Day. Mm Mm-hmm. But there are now many May Day celebrations across the world, whether it is related to witchcraft or not, um, because May Day is also associated with uh, the International Workers' Day uh, for socialists, communists. And uh, there is also a workers' recognition here in Chicago that was called the Haymarket Affair. Mm -hmm. Uh, So these are all sort of May Day celebrations that they're recognized on May 1st. Also for farming communities in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the last big day they usually have to party and I don't want to say slack off, but not work in the fields because it's the very beginning of spring. So after this is when they really had to get down to the grind and start working. So that's why Iowa has such a big, for all of us, all the holidays we don't celebrate that normal people do or whatever, but May Day is a big one around here just because it's such a huge farming community. And this is the last big hurrah 
before planting season and harvest season and everything gets really busy for them. So <laughs> one of the many reasons why we celebrate this one so hard. <laughs> Indeed. Well, to talk a little bit more about the Wiccan traditions of Beltane, um, which we said does not follow like the tr- strictly the ancient traditions. Um, it's more like a mix between Beltane and Mayday. Yes. So Tara is going to tell you more about being a Wiccan and celebrating this holiday. Yes. So this is one of my favorite holidays, um, probably because I grew up celebrating May Day. And so when I became Wiccan, it was a natural progression to me to celebrate this one. Um, I already did many of the things <laughs> uh, of the non-religious part, like have bonfires and make laurel wreaths for the door and uh, make oat cakes and serve honey and these kind of things. But there are Wiccan traditions that have evolved around this, um, like stuff that a lot of times it's kind of incorporated with the May Day stuff, but it's all about honoring new life. Um, it's the peak of spring, the beginning of summer. So the earth energies are really waking up and coming in and becoming active. Life is starting to burst. This is really all about fertility. The plants are starting to bloom. Flowers are blooming. It's all about the potential of what's going to come in summer. So um, on all levels, it's really central to be the maiden goddess has reached her fullness. She is the manifestation of growth. Um, you really see this. That's where the floral crowns come in um, on group celebrations. This is also a great group celebration time. Um, this is one of the few holidays that I really love celebrating with other people. A lot of my holiday celebrations are more solitary as I'm a solitary practitioner, but this one is so much fun with friends, guys. It's all about um, celebrating life and fire, which we all know I love fire. <laughs> so um, it's the sun's light is nurturing the emerging future harvest and protecting the community. So it's a great time to hand fast. So if you know people that are in couples, this is really where hand fasting is hugely, hugely popular. They get hand fasted and they jump over the coals of a bonfire to um, encourage fertility in the coming year. It's also, um, actually, I know tons of people that have gotten hand fasted during Beltane because you're already having a big party with your friends and there's food and there's drink. So it's a really good time. This and traditionally, also- it's like when you're talking about the Wiccan gods god and goddess yeah um, this is we talked before about like the may queen the may bride like the maiden yes. form of the goddess this is when she gets married to the green man the yes. version of the god Death at this the point green, is, the young yeah. king yes exactly so this is when she gets pregnant <laughs> so, yes. so that is why it's all about fertility and so many people want to get hand fasted on this day yeah um, so the main gods, because she's reached her fullness, she's no longer a young girl. She can get pregnant and uh, the green man takes care of that. He falls in love with her and wins her hand. The union is consummated and she becomes pregnant, which um, leads into the summer and the fertility of that. But this is why a lot of people get hand fasted on this day, because then they get to consummate with the god and goddess. And that is very popular why fertility spells are so popular at this time and yes. why the cauldron that we talked about last week is a big symbol of fertility and conception and all of that uh, yep. all ties together all ties together um, and then they also generally do toast with mead which is a honey wine so you're incorporating that honey in there um, along with your oat cakes and everything like that so it's a great time guys so much fun <laughs> It's also um, a lot of times crowns are worn by high priests and priestesses, but it's, I've never been to a ceremony where all the maidens didn't get a flower crown as well. It usually they make them themselves or their lover or suitor will make them for them and get and gift them to them, gift them the flower crown. But a lot of times uh, young maidens will get together and make their own flower crowns. They also, one of my favorite things ever is the maypole. It's, commonly associated with May Day, but also Beltane, because again, they're kind of merged. What does a pole remind you of? Just think about it. I'll let you think for a second. <laughs> anyway, but then it represents the potency of the god. So a ring of flowers is usually placed atop the maypole. 
representing the fertility of the goddess. And then many colored ribbons are uh, danced around and woven around the pole, symbolizing the spiral of life and the union of God and goddess. So I'm just going to leave you with that image. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So often these ribbons are in the colors of Beltane, which are green, red, white, silver. They also oftentimes um, weave in additional smaller ribbons that are the color of spring. So it's a very colorful, very beautiful pole. Um, They dance around. It's really just a fun time, but also very sexualized because that's (laughs) what we're here for. But it does end up looking really pretty if you've never it's gorgeous. Seen it? Like definitely check it out on on YouTube of you know people making a maid pole, but you you go over and under like the as you go around the pole, you you go over or under like the person that comes next. Mm -hmm. Um, So you like weave back and forth between people. So then all of the ribbons end up weaved and crossed over each other like a basket weave pattern. So it ends up being super pretty. It ends up being very very pretty. And then they tie the ribbons together at the bottom so it's hold steady and so for the rest of whatever festival you're at or uh, celebration you're at you can look and see the visual union of the god and goddess so So there are many many ways to celebrate both Beltane and May Day depending on you know how Wiccan you are in your beliefs or how you choose to practice even if you are a solitary practitioner you can definitely find group activities to do for this i know that you know we're still on restrictions and things but since may day is like all outdoor celebrations all outdoor stuff there are there are still some things happening around but it's also like you could just get together with friends if you wanted to do that uh we do have a discord server and people talk about where they're from so if you feel comfortable you might want to find a meetup there to meet up with some other witches and light a giant bonfire uh you know, practice fire safety. We have to say that yeah. <laughs> every time. Safely, guys. We are not telling you to Burn walk on stuff. poles and jump over fires. Like, if you choose to do that, to fire safety. Yeah. <laughs> nothing on this. us. Yeah. But there's definitely a lot of ways to celebrate. Um, obviously, the Beltane box came with a recipe and a spell to work on. There's also information on Patreon. There's a spell, a different spell, a different recipe um and a cocktail that's the other thing that i have on there may wine there you go because may wine is super popular so there is lots of stuff for you to mm-hmm. check out if you're looking for uh different okay. ways to celebrate or incorporate beltane into your witchcraft i know a uh, hugely popular holiday i know not everyone celebrates it i've mentioned before that right. the wintry holidays are more my thing but Beltane is definitely one of the biggest ones, I would say, with uh, Samhain. Those are the two. The huge ones, yeah. Yeah, the two biggest um, celebrations. So especially if you are looking to find witchcraft community around you, that this would be a good time to do it because this this and Samhain are when most people are celebrating something or other. So you might um, find a good group to hang out with. And depending on your interest, it also symbolizes the beginning of the Renaissance Fair season. And so a lot of Ren fairs start up this weekend and they have May poles and they have bonfires and they have, um, I, I not religiously, but it's just really cool to see also. <laughs> I have never been to a Ren fair, but Tara has a full outfit. I have multiple outfits. Thank you. Um, Do you really? I just, I've seen your purple one. That's it. Uh, I have a purple one, a blue one, a cream one, a gray one. Um, so here's the thing. I went with six friends. Uh, back before COVID and they all wore my outfits and I had extras <laughs> because I have so many. I love run fairs, but that is not a religious way to celebrate if you're Wiccan. Um, but it's really fun. And they almost always have maypoles erected for this. And um, a lot of the handmade jewelry and things are pagan based. So there's some that are like more secular, but there's all, I've never been to a run fair where I couldn't find um like Wiccan symbols in jewelry. So if you're looking for jewelry, handmade pieces, Ren fairs are a great place to look. Yeah, that's fun. I, I mean, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I would think it, but never never thought about that before. But yeah, that definitely makes sense. That's where I got my athame from back in the day. It's where I've gotten wands from. A lot of my jewelry is from there. It's nice because you can individually talk to the people that make the pieces and you, yeah, it's really cool. But it's not religious. 
per <laughs> se. It's just <laughs> but a good way to kick off your your season and start celebrating. But yeah, a lot of these outdoor things are happening this year. A lot yes. of these outdoor fests and fairs and things like that, obviously. Yeah, limited and safety precautions in place, but there are things to do out in the world this summer. And Unlike one thing to think about is depending on your costume, a lot of them have the option to add hoop skirts. So if you have a big hoop skirt and your friend has a big hoop skirt, you can't get within six feet of each other. <laughs> That's a good way to maintain social distancing. <laughs> I'll go back to hoop skirts. <laughs> Just saying, safety first. <laughs> I do not own a hoop skirt. Maybe I should uh, rethink that. I do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. I don't think I've ever seen you wear the hoop skirt, but I think I knew you had one. Uh, I'm pretty sure I brought it, but did not wear it to Halloween last year. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah. You wore a Ren Faire dress, but you did not wear the hoop skirt with it. Correct. But you, d- I do remember you saying that because, uh, six feet keep, mm-hmm. keep distance. <laughs> you were going to wear your hoop, but we didn't really have people over. We only had like 10 people. So yeah. And we sat outside. So it's and we sat to outside, yeah, in a hoop so. skirt. I will say that be prepared to stand if you're in a hoop skirt. <laughs> oh, good times. <laughs> that is all we have for you this week on chatting about Beltane but if you have any questions uh, for me or Tara we can Mm -hmm. um, get back to you over email or on Instagram Uh, she can answer more of the Wiccan based things if you have any questions about that Uh, but definitely reach out let us know or tag us on Instagram if you are using your Beltane box to oh, yeah. celebrate. There's a little cauldron in there, have you seen? So definitely want to see your pictures of that. Or if you have any, you know, maypoles going to Ren Fairs, pictures of anything, definitely tag us because we love to see all of that. Always, guys. All about the photos. <laughs> and that is Which Wednesday's podcast over on Instagram. Yay! And that is all that I have for you this week. So I will be back next week to talk about daily practice and routines and have a different guest co-host surprise exciting (laughs) guys very exciting i'll see you next week for that one bye everyone bye need even more witchcraft subscribe to patreon for exclusive bonus content three times a week and order sabbat boxes and other supplies at witchwednesdays.com Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.